and welcome back to The Crime Reel. For this week's true crime narration, we shall be looking at the life of Leslie Wilfred. Leslie was born on the 14th of November 1975 in the state of Georgia. She had four children during her first marriage before this ended in divorce. After her first marriage broke down, she became involved with a man by the name of Chris Wilfred, who she had known since high school. Chris was two years older than Leslie and had a 10-year-old son from a previous relationship. The couple married on the 23rd of June 2007 and the two families merged. Leslie's oldest child suffered from a variety of medical issues from a very young age. He would regularly vomit for seemingly no reason and as a result of this had an operation to remove his gallbladder. By the time Leslie and Chris married, the boy, who was now aged 13, was on a waiting list to receive a liver transplant due to an unknown medical condition. Despite not being his biological father, Chris was hoping to be able to donate part of his own liver to his stepson in order to help his recovery. Next in age was Leslie's second child, a daughter who was 11. This daughter was mixed race and was conceived after Leslie was sexually assaulted by a co-worker. Leslie also had a nine-year-old daughter who had been diagnosed with terminal cancer. This young girl was regularly visiting the hospital for treatment and to receive chemotherapy. Family, friends and the local community all rallied to help the couple and children through this difficult time. Collection boxes were placed in local stores, donations received and help was always at hand to assist the family in whatever way possible. Leslie's youngest son was around seven years old at this time and together with Chris's ten-year-old son completed the family. Despite the difficulties in Leslie's life, she regularly participated in school and church events and was training to become a registered nurse while still taking care of her family. The situation was further complicated by Chris's young son, who was reportedly not happy about his new stepmother and step-siblings. Leslie and Chris had confided in those close to them that the child was prone to extremely violent outbursts and threatening behaviour. He was often missing from family outings and was kept separate from the other four children in the household. In the summer of 2008, Leslie found out that she was pregnant. Shortly afterwards, she told the family the exciting news that she was in fact expecting twins. A few months later, in October 2008, the police were called to Leslie and Chris's home. The couple reported that Chris's son had threatened the entire family with a knife. Child Protective Services became involved with the family and Leslie would often meet with CPS to discuss her stepson's behaviour. On 10th of November 2008, when Leslie was five months pregnant, she called Chris and her family to tell them the devastating news that she had been rushed to hospital in Thomasville, Georgia, where she had given birth to their twins prematurely. The babies, who she had named Ethan and Emily, had each taken one breath before dying. She told her family that the hospital had already cremated the babies and asked them to come and collect her so that she could return home and lay the babies to rest. Her family immediately rushed to pick her up and helped plan a funeral service for the twins. This took place just a few days later, on November the 13th, at the Rose City Pentecostal Church. Leslie gave their pastor a letter to read at the funeral. This letter which she wrote from the perspective of the twins was called A Letter to Our Daddy. The babies were buried in a pair of teddy bear shaped urns, with the only picture of them being from an ultrasound taken weeks earlier. Leslie's other children were understandably distraught at the loss of their baby siblings. However, Chris's son was not allowed to attend the funeral. Meanwhile, the Child Protective Services had become increasingly suspicious about Leslie's behaviour during their meetings about Chris's son's behaviour. A few weeks before the twins were stillborn, Leslie made several comments about the young boy being responsible for the safety of her unborn twins. When details regarding the baby's deaths reached CPS, they decided to contact Bob Brettel at the local sheriff's department to investigate this family further. Bob's investigation soon uncovered a web of lies 
that was truly shocking. Initially, Bob contacted the hospital where Leslie had been treated, but he found that there was no record of either the twins' birth or their deaths. He tried to discuss this with the doctor who had treated Leslie, but found that the doctor did not actually exist. A visit to the family home found that the dining room had been converted to a nursery in preparation for the twins' arrival. It was full of baby furniture, accessories and clothes. However, a search of Leslie's computer revealed that she had made online inquiries about teddy bear urns five days before she had reportedly lost the babies. Further investigation confirmed Bob's suspicion that she had fabricated her entire pregnancy. She had in fact been sterilised during her first marriage and there was no possibility of her ever having been pregnant. The search of the home also uncovered even more disturbing information. In a cupboard in the main bedroom, police found a wooden box that had been secured to the walls and floor. Inside the box was a pillow, blanket and child's writing. The box had plastic straps on the inside. When questioned about this, Leslie told the police that it was a box that they had used for animals in the past. Upon further investigation, it was determined that Chris's son had been tied up and forced to sleep in the box each night. Leslie claimed that this was to protect her family from his violent rages. Later, psychological examinations noted that the child did not suffer from any anger issues. His only diagnosis was PTSD due to the abuse he had suffered at the hands of his family. As Bob dug deeper into the family's lives, it was revealed that Leslie's nine-year-old daughter did not in fact have cancer. Leslie had been taking the daughter to various hospitals and told the young girl that she was undergoing chemotherapy but was still going to die. Chris, the husband, was completely unaware of this. The sexual assault which resulted in the conception of Leslie's 11-year-old daughter was also investigated by police. They found no records of this assault as it had never been reported. Whilst this lack of reporting does not in itself mean the attack never happened, many of Leslie's family members were convinced that Leslie had wanted a mixed race baby after seeing the attention another family member received after giving birth to a mixed race child. Together with the other lies uncovered, Leslie's version of the events is now in doubt. Additionally, it was discovered that Leslie's 13 year old son did not have any liver problems and did not require a transplant. Again, the level of lies which came to light have led to speculation about whether the gallbladder surgery that he had undergone years prior could have been as a result of Leslie poisoning him. However, this has never been confirmed. All of the children believed that they were also suffering from a variety of other medical conditions. Leslie had constantly filled their heads with details of imaginary illnesses which they were supposedly suffering from. On November the 21st, 2008, both Leslie and Chris were arrested and charged with child cruelty and theft by deception. Leslie underwent extensive psychiatric examination. It was determined that she did not have any psychiatric illness to account for her behaviour and that she was suffering from a personality disorder. Leslie was diagnosed with Munchausen syndrome where an individual invents medical problems in order to gain sympathy. She was further diagnosed with Munchausen by proxy. That is where a caregiver invents and often induces medical problems on those around them. In 2011, she was found guilty of child cruelty and theft by deception. She was sentenced to eight years in prison, followed by 30 years probation. She was also told to repay the money that had been donated to assist them in caring for their children. It is believed that Chris was unaware of all of the lies concerning the children's illnesses and did not know that his wife had faked her pregnancy. He was found guilty of one count of child cruelty. Both Leslie and Chris have been ordered not to contact their children. It is understood that the children did not suffer any permanent physical damage as a result of their ordeal However, the impact on their mental health will never be known. That concludes the story of Leslie Wilfred. Please add any comments down below. I'll be interested in reading them. I'd also like to thank Joanne Sornsbury for sending me some pictures of her little dog, Beano. Beano loves chasing things such as squirrels and pigeons and also the green parakeets that they have in London these days. 
Joanne describes them as London's posh pigeons. The video shows him on the balcony, relaxing and chilling, but every day he has a lovely long run in the park. Bino likes to drive cars and truly does love chasing down squirrels. Don't forget if you'd like to feature your animal on our petty crime section, any animal, just drop me an email at thecrimereel at gmail.com and I'll see if I can include them in future videos. Thanks very much for listening to The Crime Reel. Stay safe. Goodbye. Psst, tell me about your pets. Goodbye.